First, I just want to talk about the, as an economic student, about the economy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you touched on this briefly, but Afghanistan has received nearly 60 billion US dollars in civilian aid since 2002. And according to the World Bank... Excuse me. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and um, yes, according sir. to the World Bank, uh, foreign aid com currently comprises nearly the equivalent of the country's GDP. Now, given this kind of dependency on foreign aid, how do you actually envisage Afghanistan becoming more economically self-sufficient, self-reliant in the future? Well, uh, <clears throat> a better resourceful population, better educated, uh, economically active. We are in, a, in an extremely vibrant region of the world. Uh, Afghanistan is the crossroads of, uh, of Central Asia and South Asia. Uh, let me give you some, some examples so I can illustrate my point. In 2001, our trade with Pakistan was $25 million annually. Today, it's over $2 billion. That's the, the, the official economy as against the unofficial economy. Yes? Am I right to use that term? Right. So the, 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 the official economy, the, 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 the statistically known economy is $2 billion. With Iran, the same over a billion dollars. With Tajikistan, with Russia, with China, with India, and with Europe. And Afghanistan, as I mentioned, is tremendously rich in, in uh, resources, uh, uh, properly extracted through good contracts. Uh, we will be uh, a very good country. And today, uh, we generate a lot more of our resources. Uh, than we did in uh, 2001. So you give us another 10 years. Uh, the next Afghan president here, um, if he comes twice as I did, uh, will tell you that Afghanistan is a lot more self-reliant. Uh, 2013, so 10 years will be 2023. 20, in 2023, Afghanistan will be not as much a burden on the international community as it is today. It will be a lot less and a better country. 